Welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. With us this week, comedian and impressionist Matt Friend here to break down Newsom DeSantis and look forward to 2024. Plus, a look back at our biggest interviews and most newsworthy moments of 2023, and our favorite celebrities using their platforms for good, as the final issue is of the year starts right now. Broadcasting across California, you're watching The Issue Is. Biden might not even be the nominee. Well, you, so I'm get in the race. Biden what are you waiting the for, President? Of my lifetime, but you wear heels, you can't smile. We all know this. Comedian and impressionist Matt Friend playing both Gavin Newsom and Ron DeSantis ahead of their recent debate. Matt Friend, one of our favorite guests and one of our favorite people back on The Issue Is. Welcome back to the it's, show. It's always the best to be here. Thanks for having me again. Uh, so the last time you were here, yes. we did a fake debate between <laughs> Ron DeSantis and Gavin Newsom because we didn't know if it was really going to happen. We predicted it. Not only did it happen, they literally took what you said word for word yeah. as part of the debate. Now that you've seen it for real, what would you think? Well, I feel like I was plagiarized a little bit, even <laughs> though I took their exact lines. It was not so hard to picture what would happen given the fact that they both kind of say the exact same thing in every single interview they do when attacking <laughs> each other. Right. However, it did feel like a two-on-one -on -one situation. It, most of the debate, if not the whole debate, it felt like it was Hannity, DeSantis versus Newsom. I thought Newsom held his ground pretty well. Yeah, and so there was this weird moment uh, towards the end <laughs> where Sean Hannity said, you guys want to keep going? And they're both like, let's keep going. And then they came back from a commercial break and they weren't going anymore. Right. And there were some rumors, maybe Jennifer Siebel Newsom stopped the debate. Who knows what exactly happened? Could be. Uh, so we have an exclusive where both of them have agreed to come here. Where'd you get that? To do the final word on the debate. Um, so we now welcome with us the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> well, you know, sure. Let well, let me just tell you, first of all, this debate was just another example that shows a guy like Gavin Newsom. Well, he has no business in the Oval Office, let alone running the state of California. There's homeless <laughs> running wild. You see how slick the guy is? And let me just tell you, okay, let me tell you, people are saying that, you know, I'm wearing, I'm saying I'm wearing heels. They're saying I'm wearing lip. It's not true. I'm a tall guy. I got a lot of power. I did that when I did the Little League. We all know that to be true. And let me just tell you, these Democrats, they want to run our, run our cities amok. It's totally not okay. And as your president, there's going to be a new sheriff in town. So buckle up, smile. <laughs> it's so great. It's well, all the way over here. Governor Newsom, your, your response, the last word. <laughs> well, I, I would just say that Ron DeSantos, he's no Ronald Reagan. This is not the Republican Party that, that I, I grew up in. I don't, I don't recognize my country, America, in this party. And Ron is just a fraud. And frankly, he's four feet tall. <laughs> That one's gotten a little better, right? Yeah, yeah. A little bit. It's, it's, it's going well. But Gavin Newsom is Will Arnett from Smart List, but a little bit adjusted. A little bit different, yeah. A little bit, Both yeah. of them could use a little water sometimes. Yeah, they really could. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the All Sanders' right. lips are so parched. Yeah. <laughs> so you, uh, you've you been on a roll uh, it's since crazy. we saw you. So I don't know, you weren't even alive when, when uh, Good Burger first came out, no, were you? No, I was not. That was a big sh show on, on All That and yes. Nickelodeon back in the day. But you had worked with Kenan Thompson as, yes. as like, an intern with him, basically, right? I, yeah. 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 And, and so now you're in Good Burger 2 yeah. with Keenan and Te Kel. Yes. Uh, what was that experience like? I mean, like you having your own show, there's surreal moments, and this was crazy. We shot in Rhode Island uh, a few weeks before the strike happened, uh, and it was just me in Rhode Island with Keenan and Kel. We shot a scene. I was the serious waiter. I said something like, my name is Maurice. <laughs> Alfredo is the sauce. <laughs> so they gave me a lot of... Uh, Kind of leeway to do what I wanted yeah. with the character. I was going real Daniel Day Lewis method in my one scene. And people can see that right now on Paramount Plus. <laughs> yes. Meanwhile, uh, also on The Simpsons, yes, uh, you yes. played Jimmy Fallon, I did. who you used to intern for That's at right. the Tonight Show, worked alongside Hank Azaria, yes. who was your dad's college roommate. That's right. That's right. He, it's the closest <laughs> I'll ever be to being a Nepo baby. Yeah. Uh, that is the connection. Now give us a little Jimmy Fallon. It was just Jimmy Fallon laughing like a maniac. It's not particularly good, but it was just like. Uh, <laughs> Why do you do that, buddy? Come on, buddy. It's not great. And, and doing these impressions online, you've gone viral so much that yes. a lot of the celebrities have wanted to become friends with you. Yeah. And you have this very sweet, sort of strange relationship with John Stamos, of course, Uncle Jesse. How was the pizza? He's the when best. are you going to stop coming over to my house? I, when am I? I just jump over the fence. It's pretty easy. I like having you. Thanks. You're a talented young kid. Uh huh. 
What's your name again? <laughs> so you're like hanging out with this guy all the time. Yeah, no, John, uh, we connected through the pandemic on TikTok and he's kind of become like a mentor a bit and uh, a friend and he's just the man. And I've gone over to his house. I don't think he's invited me. I've just shown up at his door. <laughs> What's his house like? It's awesome. Uh, and uh, he made me a pizza. So he likes making pizzas. He's the coolest guy. We gives got, me great. He's really, like, he's really genuinely so nice. It's insane. We Hope got, he comes on your show. We got to have the two of you on the show. Well, together. you would love him because he does the, the, loves all the old school show business, just like is, the two of us. Yeah, we love, we love Talk a good like Don Rickles story or yeah, something exactly. like that, which is oh, he amazing. He was friends with Rickles, uh, which is so cool. Yeah. Um, and we also know you love the politics. Yes. And you recently headed to the White House after yeah. making fun of the politicians <laughs> for so long. We've got some Why images would, of that. Here you are with your Mitch McConnell and Cory Booker together, and you at the. Did this blow your mind? What was it like being that at the was, White House? Aside from being on the issue is the White House, top two <laughs> moments. And uh, that was, I'd never been in there. I, I was like, why are they letting the guy who roasts everyone who's ever stepped foot in this building to yeah. actually enter? But it was surreal. Uh, and my friend John, who works in the White House, gave me a little tour. Got to see uh, the West Wing and the Oval. Didn't get to go in it, but I kind of was outside of it. Uh, in the press room, it, it was just surreal. And what did incredible. Cory Booker say to you? Cory Booker, I think, was a little bit freaked out when I took my McConnell glass out. I said, Cory, it is great to see you. I love the service and the work you've done. <laughs> but it was cool. I just went up to him. He was just standing there. I was like, why not just go That's for it? That's so cool. Uh, last time you were here, we talked a lot about George Santos. And now, of course, he's out of the house. It's unbelievable. And he's on Cameo. It's unbelievable. What do you make of his new career uh, fulfilling requests of videos for people? I mean, I definitely think I should probably be doing something about my own Cameo presence, <laughs> given the fact that he just made more money than you will make in Congress yeah. by doing videos. But like, what is George's aim is my question to the people watching the show. Like, Does he want to pay for his legal fees or mm -hmm. is he just trying to buy like a Birkin bag? or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, he used his campaign cash to pay for OnlyFans before, That's right. so now he needs a new source of revenue. But, but apparently he denies being able to open things with his feet, right? <laughs> Objects? Okay. Thank you for this, that. This will be cut. So we are, we are now <laughs> approaching the new year, right? Yeah. And so uh, as we head towards the new year, I know there's a lot of people that have their New Year's resolutions. Yes, there are. So we want to bring some of them to you, our issue as viewers exclusively. And, and let's start with George Santos. What's his New Year's resolution after a very, very tumultuous 2023? Well, I find the question to be personally offensive. <laughs> I don't need to work on anything new. I'm going to keep doing me and my thing. And you should be ashamed of even asking me that, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, um, Mr. President <laughs> is back with us, uh, who could be reelected president well, in 2024. That What's your New Year's resolution, Mr. Trump? My resolution is to restore sanity to the great country that we're living in, to beat sleepy Joe Biden and to become the greatest dictator and president anybody has ever seen for one day. For one day. One day as the dictator. Um, somebody else who wants to be the president and, and may end up working in the cabinet, Vivek Ramaswamy. Well, in this country. <laughs> My one resolution is to disband the woke agenda that pervades our system in the country and to disband liberal ideology in our schools. Thank you very much, Mr. Ramaswamy. We also have a, a new guest this time, the Speaker yes. of the House, Mike Johnson, who a lot of people are just getting to know. Uh, Mr. Speaker, what's your goal for the next year? Well, yeah, Alex, I'm glad you asked. And uh, <laughs> I, I would say uh, my, my one goal uh, as a House Republican, and we're pushing the ball forward every dang day of the week, <laughs> would be just to get more kids inspired by God uh, and to place your hand on the Bible every single morning and say, I'm grateful for this life, uh, except for minorities. Thank you so much. Right, God, oh, we, God, can't, we can't God, do that. God, God, can't. God, God bless you, Mr. Gotcha. Speaker. Thank you very much. Um, you know, the Speaker is working now with the Senate <laughs> Minority Leader, Mitch McConnell, who hopes to be the Senate Majority Leader once again. Uh, Mr. Senator, um, your New Year's resolution. Well, it's clear that my New Year's resolution would be to just get... <laughs> Mr. Uh, Senator, we... We, okay, sir. I'm fine. Okay. I'm totally fine. I've recovered. Okay. The okay. president called to check on me. I told him I got sandbagged. <laughs> uh, okay. Now we're joined by Leonard Bernstein, the star, uh, but, but not I, just Leonard look, Bernstein. Look. We're joined I, by Bradley yes. Cooper playing yes. Leonard Bernstein. Well, I, I, I would just say that the, if, 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 this, if someone doesn't sing in you, then nothing sings in you. <laughs> And if nothing sings in you, then, then you can't make music. 
<laughs> and that would be my New Year's resolution, to, to make more music and to win an Oscar. Okay, thank you very much. We also have Stanley Tucci is, is here with us. I know one of, one of your favorites. I'm, I'm hungry already. Are we rolling? <laughs> we filming? Okay. My New Year's resolution would be to become an even better chef and to perfect my mother's perfect recipe of a chicken cacciatore. <laughs> so keep cooking and keep smiling. I'm Stanley Tucci, and this has been The Issue Is. Thank you very much. And finally, when we think of New Year's now, we think of Andy yeah, Cohen, right, who yeah. often hosts New Year's. Right. Uh, what's your New Year's yeah, resolution? My, my New Year's resolution is quite simple. Uh, it would be <laughs> to let the daddies drink. And I'm not just talking about New Year's, okay? I want to drink whenever I want. Yeah, even though I'm a dad, I should enjoy my life. You know what I mean? I think so. Yeah, it's amazing. John Mayer is in the clubhouse. Ugh. <laughs> I think, I think Andy and Anderson should invite you on New Year's. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I agree. Um, so you're, you're everywhere, <laughs> and you're on tour as well. People can see you as we put up your website, mattfriend.com, yes. in San Diego, yeah. uh, January 25th through 27. Uh, again, they can find your information at mattfriend.com. Yes. And uh, there's, there's your picture there, Matt Friend Live. And you've also uh, been hanging uh, with singers. We know you got a great singing voice. Michael Buble, recently you were out with. Um, yes. You know, it's interesting to see the two of you guys together. I know you've been doing impressions of him for years. Yeah, it, and it was surreal to meet him. And he's just a super nice, cool guy. And you know, we, we like to end our segments with music here on The Issue Is. But since we can't actually afford to have Michael Buble. Oh, I see what this is going. Or pay for his music rights, or frankly pay for the good version of Jingle Bells. How about you take us out with Jingle Bells, the generic version? Okay. Yeah. Hello, friends. A Jingle Bells, a Jingle Bells, it's Alex Michaels and show. We all know he's your favorite newsman in California. A Jingle Bells, a Jingle Bells, we know what the issue is. The issue is Alex is here, and I don't know what else to say. Hey! Hey! Dashing through the snow. <laughs> in a one horse <laughs> open sleigh. Alex is here, and Gloria already isn't dancing. Where is Rick Caruso? He is not the mayor. Because Karen Bass won the thing, and that is why I'm here. Hey! Jingle bells! Jingle bells! Jingle bells! Jingle all the way! I oh, am here on flights and ever when Alex is here to stay. Hey! <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Alex, we'll be right back. Good night, everybody. <laughs> This is our final new episode of The Issue Is this year, so here's a look back at some of our most memorable moments of 2023. What is your big takeaway from this trip? Well, tear down the walls. We travel exclusively to China with Governor Newsom for his high-profile meetings talking climate change. The most important issue in our lives. We're in Monterey Park after a mass shooting. How do you make somebody feel better in a moment like this? By trying to do better. We visit Glendale amidst clashes over LGBTQ issues. Where's our humanity? Where's our decency? In Venice, we talk mental health reform. It's the most exciting thing I've ever been part of. At the GOP debate, we ask about his debate with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. You're baiting him with the debate offer? Of course. I mean, why is he debating a guy who's not even running for president when he's running for president? Governor. One of our favorite journalists. With Arnold Schwarzenegger, we check out Green Tech. Face the pictures. Very nice. Work out at Gold's Gym. Ah, Bravo. And observe his efforts to fight anti-Semitism and help survivors of October 7th. Schwarzenegger discussing his father, a Nazi officer in World War II. All of these guys that are helping me in America realize my dreams are mm -hmm. Jewish. Mm -hmm. I said, so you should never ever talk about Jews that way. L.A. Mayor Karen Bass talks her challenges. Is it fair to say the system is more effed up than you thought? <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely fair to say that. The issue is the 2024 presidential race. <laughs> Mr. President, what's your message to the people of California? It's in a lot of trouble, California. Would you like to run against Governor Newsom? I'd love it. <laughs> You've known Donald Trump for a long time. Um, what do you make of him coming back? It scares the crap out of me. Biden 2024, is he too old to be doing this? <clears throat> uh, I think that Joe should step aside. People get so worried about Joe Biden's age, but this is binary. It's a choice between two people. If the final choice is Trump versus Biden, right now you're undecided? 
I am not going to, I'm, I don't have a plan B. Why are you running? I'm running because some things need to be said and some things need to be done. Well, Alex, uh, I, I'm pro-life, I don't apologize for it. Favorite rapper of all time? Eminem, no doubt. And what's the best rap lyric of all time? Success is my only option. <laughs> <laughs> Another big issue, the fight for the House Speaker's gavel. This week, Kevin McCarthy of Bakersfield saw more ballots for Speaker of the House than anyone in over a hundred years. This rule is like Kevin McCarthy dousing himself in fuel and then handing out 435 matches. You obviously worked so hard to get to the job of Speaker of the House. It wasn't easy, it took it, me 15 it, rounds. It wasn't easy. I think it made me stronger actually, it made me better prepared. This week is the first Speaker of the House ever to be ousted by his colleagues. We were in shock. We never thought that we would come to this point. Real succinctly describe Kevin McCarthy's legacy as Speaker incredibly shrinking speakership. The issue is the U.S. Senate. This year, we lost Senator Dianne Feinstein and hosted the first TV interview with her replacement. Like a month ago, could you have even imagined that you would be a United States Senator? It was not on my bingo card, Alex. Yeah. It's just great to have a partner in Senator Butler like this. Several of the Senate candidates announcing their candidacies with us. Great to make an announcement on your show. Why announce right now? Well, I think Washington is increasingly struggling to deliver for Americans. Why you? Why are you doing this? Well, why not me? Steve Garvey, are you running for U.S. Senate? Well, it's been the worst kept secret, I think. <laughs> what is the big announcement? I am running for U.S. Senate. <laughs> when we come back, during this season of giving, we look back at all the big name stars we've had on our show using their platforms for good. Stay with us, you're watching The Issue Is. As we look back on 2023 on The Issue Is, we especially enjoyed stories like this one, where we could take a break from the political back and forth and talk to big name stars using their platforms for good, including George Clooney. We know this works. Actor George Clooney tours the LA school he co-founded, which trains students to work on film sets. They feel sometimes for the first time that uh, that they have value. They feel seen. Yeah, sure. And, and, and not only feel seen, but seen by one of the top actors huge in the world. Star. A huge, huge star. I mean, the, come on. The, the, I mean, the biggest star in the world. That's what I try to tell people. Yeah. I told Tom Cruise that the I other was, day. I was going to say, that's what we said to him last week. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. <laughs> that to you represents freedom, right? It does. Rock star Sammy Hagar shows us his first ever beach club, which raises funds for local charities. After relying on food banks as a kid, Hagar now donates to hundreds of food banks around the country. I recommend more artists do that. There, yeah. There's something I'll look at the camera and say, yeah. you guys need to do that. Thank you. That's loud. Magic Johnson delivers holiday hope to underserved communities that he's invested millions to lift up. It's been important for me to give back, touch other people, because somebody helped me to become Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. I didn't do this by myself. Come on up, guys. Come on up. The foundation, co-founded by Dodger legend Clayton Kershaw and his wife Ellen, donates backpacks to local kids and builds homes in Africa. Ultimately, baseball is a pretty great platform to be able to do some great things. What do you think is the biggest lesson everybody can learn from Kershaw's challenge? Everybody has been given a God-given passion, talent, purpose, and it's all about figuring out how to use that. It's about the future of our kids. We host a fundraiser for Juju Smith-Schuster's Foundation, which funds free football camps for local kids. As a kid, Juju himself couldn't afford camp. There's no materialistic thing in the world that makes me more happy than to get joy from kids because I was once in her shoes. So I know what it feels like. They teach me to dance during this luau-style party, but clearly Juju is the expert. You can listen to extended conversations with all of those guests anytime by searching for The Issue Is wherever you stream your podcasts. We'll wrap things up for the year with my favorite interview of all after this. It's been five years since we launched our show. You were there on week one. It goes fast. Congratulations. Thanks so much for being on The Issue Is. Hey, it's a great program. I love to be on it. Show. It's been great. It's uh, been a great show. Thank yeah. you. And we hope you'll come visit us. I love us. your clips. <laughs> wow. I don't think I've ever gotten that question before. You've become the brand name in California now. So every California congressperson has to pay uh, a visit. Oh, I'm glad we have people like you because you, you are objective and fair. And <laughs> you realize that over the next 10 years, if you aren't already, you'll be way more significant than me. 
Thanks so much, guys. Great to see you. Got to tell you, that guy is one of the best guys to analyze politics yeah. in the country. Right. Period. Anytime you call, no matter what the issue is, I will be there for you. That will be there for your station because you're fantastic. All of those incredible guests for being on the show and saying such nice things about us. But of all the guests this year, one person stands out to me personally. Her name is Selena Biniez Karp, and she was the youngest girl on Schindler's List. She's now in her 90s. We talked with her at the Auschwitz exhibit at the Reagan Library, and she shared with us the key lesson from her life. You have to forgive. You cannot hold grudges. You cannot hate, because it will get you nowhere. I mean, there's some people that'll hear that and say, how do you forgive the Nazis, the worst people in the history of the world? You forgive, but you don't forget. How about that? We can't control what others do to us or say about us, but we can control how we react. Keeping anger or resentment in your heart takes up space that could be used instead for love, especially love of your family. I couldn't be more grateful for my family for making everything I do possible. I am also so grateful for our small but dedicated, creative, and kind behind-the-scenes crew who are key to every episode that you see. So we end this year with images of them and a wish of a very happy new year to you and all those you love. See you in 2024 for a wild election year ahead. Thank <laughs> you.